Warning, the following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Which ended in June 2017 was a mistrial. Yes. Right. So the then, hung jury, yes. So then a retrial was set. Yes. For you to represent him in the retrial. Yes. In the first trial, the judge let one other woman testify against Bill Cosby. One other woman in addition to the alleged victim. When I showed up, he allowed five women to testify along with the alleged victim. It was clearly an effort to make sure there was a conviction by the trial judge. It was clearly an effort to make sure there was a conviction by the trial judge. It was clearly an effort to make sure there was a conviction by the trial judge. Before this case, Michael Jackson was accused of child sexual abuse in 1993. Um, he ended up settling with the family out of court, right? Yes. And the prosecutors ended up dropping the criminal investigation after the accuser stopped cooperating. Did you and Michael talk about that case? Michael Jackson told me in no uncertain terms that settling that case in 1994 was the biggest mistake he'd ever made. He should never have settled it. He should have fought it through a trial. He would have won. It was an absurd case. But he was advised, he told me, by lawyers, by business advisors, to settle it and get rid of it, that he had bigger fish to fry, bigger projects to, to get involved in, that the money would be a drop in the bucket compared to what he was capable of making around the world, and that diverting everybody's attention because of the publicity attached to this civil case was a mistake. Uh, he followed his advisor's, you know, suggestions. He paid money. And what it really did was it opened Pandora's box because suddenly everybody on the planet began suing him, thinking they could make an easy buck suing Michael Jackson. I mean, employees were suing him. Uh, people he met on the street were suing him. It was just <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and he told me that was the biggest mistake he ever made was not fighting that till the end. How much did he settle for in that case? Well, allegedly, it was around $20 million. Wow. There, there are differing opinions as to how much it was. I was not involved in that case, and yeah. I was not involved in that settlement. I had to deal with it because, to my shock, the trial judge in the criminal case that I defended allowed evidence that he had settled cases to come into the trial. I had never seen that before. I thought it was highly prejudicial, but the judge let it in, so I had to deal with the fact that the jury knew he had settled two other cases uh, the judge didn't let the dollar amounts come into the courtroom, but people knew what they were. Um, I had to deal with that. And basically, as I said a second ago, I told the jury that he was advised to do this, that he would make far more money than this. He was the great, the world's greatest singer, choreographer, the greatest artist, the greatest dancer, that he should get rid of this case, that the money was a drop in the bucket. And he unfortunately followed that advice. Uh, okay, so then there was a documentary that came out in 2003 called Living with Michael Jackson. And in that documentary, they showed him holding hands with a, a young boy named Gavin Arvizo. And he also talked about how he would have kids sleeping, you know, in this large bed of his. And that actually triggered his 2005 case. That's correct. There was a documentary... Uh, that was made by uh, someone named Martin Bashir. Unfortunately, he convinced Michael that he would be a very fair documentary filmmaker that, according to Michael, because I wasn't involved in this, uh, Michael said the man told him that he would make him, uh, he would treat him very fairly. Uh, he would show what a wonderful artist and father he was. And Michael was expecting this documentary to be very positive. It turned out, turned out to be exactly the opposite. But Michael did something very smart. He wouldn't conduct any interview with this producer without having his own videographer present. So we had the parts that were included in the documentary, and we had the outtakes that were not included in the documentary. Mm -hmm. And there was a tremendous difference between what this producer portrayed Michael as in the documentary and what he was saying to him in the outtakes he did not include. 
So what happened in the trial was the prosecutors wanted permission from the court, the judge, to use this documentary and show it to the jury. And I, I acted like I didn't want them to. I actually did. Because, first of all, a lot, a lot of that documentary I thought would be very appealing to a jury. You show a very young Michael Jackson performing as a child. You show him grow and develop. You show his enormous talent. He sings. You know, the, the music just takes over, you know, the atmosphere. So the press fixated on a couple of quotes they thought were very damaging to Michael Jackson, I focused on the other parts, which I thought were very favorable to him, and I wanted the judge to let us use the outtakes that weren't included, where the producer, Mr. Bashir, told him he was a great father, he was learning wonderful things from him. I mean, the outtakes were very different from the spirit of the documentary, as far as I'm concerned. So both came in, the documentary came in the prosecution's case, the outtakes came in our case, and the rest is history. He was acquitted of every count. Three men charged in plots to bribe, threaten alleged victims. One man allegedly discussed paying a victim $500,000 to keep her from cooperating with the feds, saying, she got too much. Another harassed a woman who filed a lawsuit against Kelly, the feds say. The overtures began in late May, months after a woman who once publicly defended R. Kelly turned on the R&B singer and began to cooperate with federal authorities. In a text message, the woman was allegedly told, he wants to pay you for silence. Then, in a phone call recorded by law enforcement with the woman's permission, Richard Arlene Jr. allegedly offered the woman half a million dollars to stop working with the feds. You got some shish. I don't know what the F you might got, some videos or some iPads or whatever you might got, your story, Arlene allegedly said. They just want that to disappear. You know what I'm saying? Now Arlene, 31, of Dalton has been charged by federal prosecutors in New York with trying to prevent the woman from testifying there against Kelly. Also charged in separate, but similar, schemes are Donald Russell, 45, of Chicago, and Michael Williams, 37, of Georgia. Criminal complaints against all three men, who each have ties to Kelly, were made public Wednesday. The complaint against Arlene said, it remains unclear whether Kelly, or others, implicitly or explicitly authorized Arlene Jr. to negotiate a bribe payment on behalf of Kelly. Still, the new charges are bad news for the singer who has been locked up in Chicago's Metropolitan Correctional Center for more than a year. Though he is due to go to trial in Chicago and Brooklyn this fall, both cases could be delayed by the coronavirus pandemic. Without question, Robert Kelly had nothing to do with any of these alleged acts by those charged, Steve Greenberg, one of Kelly's lawyers, wrote on Twitter after the charges were unsealed. He hasn't attempted to intimidate anyone, or encouraged anyone else to do so. No involvement whatsoever. Kelly's legal team has been trying to get Kelly out of jail for months, pointing largely to the pandemic. But prosecutors have underscored allegations that Kelly obstructed justice in his 2008 Cook County child pornography trial. This week, prosecutors also said a bank account controlled by Kelly received at least $1.2 million last year and, in recorded jail calls, Kelly appeared to direct people to contact a nominee to receive payments indirectly from Kelly. Earlier this year, the feds alleged that a prison staff member helped Kelly, 53, make an unrecorded phone call. I don't know if y'all can recall that situation with, um, they said an attorney brought some paper information or a letter or something to Robert and it didn't go through security check you know because security check is supposed to read every letter it, you know just supposed to screen everything and so um, he ended up getting a letter from some attorney and I wish I know what attorney that was um, I really wish I knew what attorney that was and so this attorney gave him this letter without giving it to security. Okay, and then, you know, they say he got in trouble because a staff member um, let him make a unrecorded phone call. So if you can remember that and recall that, that was a little bit before um, Robert's um, hearing to try to get bond. But everything seemed to happen at least a week before Robert goes to get a, um, for a bond hearing. 
And so I was like, when, when that information came out, I'm like, you know what, that's a setup. You know, they are setting Robert up. Like, okay, a staff member, like Robert never been in jail before, you know, sitting in jail like that. You know, a staff member, you know, was probably like, okay, um, you can use the phone. The phones are tied up. You, you can use this phone or whatever. If Robert made that phone call, if it happened, you know what I mean? So you can look at it and tell that this has been the biggest plot and scheme and setup, you know, like um, Tom said, you know, to just try to get a conviction and try to keep him in, ho in holding so they can put pressure on his neck and make it seem like he will never get out. So let's um, do a plea deal. You see, nothing's working for you. Everything is, that we turned down everything. The judge is denying everything for you. So you see, you're not going to win. So they're trying to pressure Robert into a plea here. And thank God he's continuing to fight. Um, this case, um, the proof is innocence, you know. Now, they say Kelly called the woman at issue in the Arlene complaint under such circumstances. Though that woman has not been identified by federal authorities, the facts in the complaint appear to match those surrounding former Kelly girlfriend Ezreal Clary. Prosecutors say the woman began to cooperate with federal authorities January 8, Kelly's birthday, after publicly supporting him in a March 2019 TV interview. If I had a way to talk to Rob, being next to him and telling him what's going on, without nobody listening to, no feds, nobody, he gonna pay her a off to be quiet, Arlene allegedly said of the woman in one recorded call with another individual. She got too much. She got too much. Listening to that part took me back down memory, memory lane. Do y'all remember when um, Azriel had the fight with Joy um, on Robert's birthday and then you know, she went to the emergency room and then, you know, Shabazz recording her um, talking to um, Robert on the phone. And I'm like, how the hell she get Robert on the phone? Because they should have, you know, a certain time to make a call. So who set that up? Who in that jail set that up? And who was that um, employee of MCC working with to get robert on that phone who that's the question on that that just I'm, that just i'm like damn you know i'm like wow but anyway so you have this man talking about five hundred thousand dollars um to keep um this woman quiet okay robert is scraping up money to pay his attorneys um and then plus she already you know went on her um rampage and um smearing robert um campaign um, talking to, you know, different, um, outlets about Robert, you know? So why would he do that when she was already running her mouth? Like I said, this is something, a picture that the DA, the government wants the public to see. That's the type of image, but they don't want nobody to know about the behind the scenes um, situation. You see what I'm saying here? Larry also claimed this summer to be the victim of an arson attack that appears to be at issue in the complaint against Williams. He is accused of setting fire on June 11th to an SUV parked outside a Florida home where an alleged Kelly victim was staying. Ahead of the attack, Williams also allegedly made several internet queries, including, where can I buy a .50 custom machine gun, and, countries that don't have extradition with the United States as well as a search for fertilizer and diesel fuel that led him to visit a website titled How Do Fertilizer Bombs Work? Russell, a manager and advisor to Kelly, is accused of harassing another woman who filed a lawsuit against Kelly. The Fed said he also created a Facebook page called Surviving Lies, a play on the title of the Lifetime documentary series Surviving R. Kelly, and posted screenshots of text messages and sexually explicit photographs of the woman there. Another big story in the Sour 18. Three men arrested for going to great lengths to try and silence some of R. Kelly's victims. The feds say witness intimidation was the play. Two of the men arrested are from the Chicago area. Chris Ty is live at the Dirksen Federal Building, where one of them recently went before a judge. Chris. 
Brad, Erica, cars set on fire, threats of violence, six-figure payouts. Just some of the intimidation tactics that investigators believe allies of R. Kelly used to silence his accusers. Some of it happening in just the last two months. Last summer, Dalton, Illinois resident Richard Arline Jr. posted support on Instagram for his friend R. Kelly. He's a good father and he's a good person. He don't bother nobody. He just go to work and come home. Today, neighbors floored by his arrest on federal charges related to Kelly. They say he bribed a 17-year-old witness to not testify against the artist. On a wiretap this June, he offered her $500,000 to keep quiet, they say, and to suppress videos she had of the two of them. What's unclear is whether Kelly authorized the bribe. What's unclear is whether Kelly authorized the bribe. What's unclear is whether Kelly authorized the bribe. One of the surest ways to get the government to pay attention to you is to try to interfere with one of their cases or intimidate one of their witnesses. That is going to bring them down on you like a ton of bricks. He wasn't alone. The feds say Michael Williams of Georgia texted the father of a trial witness, saying it might be wise to protect your daughter from heartache she's going to endure through this and after. On the same day, an SUV of his exploded in front of that witness's home, and they found internet searches for fertilizer bombs and countries that don't have extradition. A third arrest today, Donnell Russell of Chicago, who in the fall of 2018, they say, sent a letter to a Jane Doe witness threatening to reveal sexually explicit photos if she testified. And in December of the same year, she and her mom received texts from a phone number associated with the Russell business saying, you have been warned, publishing soon, and pull the plug or you'll be exposed. To those of us on the outside looking in, these are new characters. Characters in the Kelly case who've taken brazen steps, investigators say, to get the witnesses to keep quiet. And one other point that needs to be made here is that investigators have made it very clear they have a mountain of evidence to prove their point. What they have less of, at least according to these initial documents, Erica, is any indication that R. Kelly or his team sent these people and put them in motion. So what they have less of, at least according to these initial documents, Erica, is any indication that R. Kelly or his team sent these people and put them in motion. So what they have less of, at least according to these initial documents, Erica, is any indication that R. Kelly or his team sent these people and put them in motion. So I'll take it here. Uh, and this one is not for sensitive ears, but potentially says a lot. The documents also revealed the apparent rules Kelly's team put on the under underage girls when they were reportedly having sex with him. That's right, Brad. They had to wear bracelets to identify that they were part of that group. There were rules. You had to wear baggy clothes when you weren't around him. You couldn't go to the bathroom without his permission. You couldn't eat around R. Kelly. A whole list of rules. Now, all of this, both the allegations of intimidation and the rules that are embedded in that culture. Wait a minute and bless these little reporters' heart. They don't know, do they? See, they, they, it shows they don't know nothing about backstage passes, VIP, um, the VIP parties. Um, they have to wear these bracelets to let them know they're with the group. Of course, if you with um, a celebrity or an artist or whatever it may be, you're going to have to have that badge or you're going to have to have that VIP um, certain kind of um, little bracelet on your arm to identify that you are to go past beyond the point of just the crowd, regular crowd. So, ooh. and see, I had to um, wear, you know, different type of bracelets to get in like private parties, um, to backstage passes when we have our shows. Had to have my little deal on, my little um, badge. Um, um, for this um, party here, this house party, um we it was a special kind of bracelet like that we had on and so it was like paper it was like a special kind of bracelet so um that's how they identified us you know so we can be able to get into the house private house party so you know it's just different um bracelets that you put on you know different things that you put on to identify that person to um be in that group or whatever the case might be Lord bless their little heart and the little baggy clothes. Um, when you 
on the tour bus, you're not going to be wearing no sexy dresses and, and things like that. Um, you're going to wear loose clothes so you can be comfortable um, for the um, road trip. And when you make it there, if you're late, um, you don't have time to change, you're going to go in there just like that. You know, from what I hear, sometimes he's running late, so they have to just go. And, and perform no bathing no changing clothes just straight to the venue to do the show so they won't get um you know sued by the promoter so um when you go vip this what happened R. Kelly's attorney today telling CBS2 they vehemently deny that anything released today was at the direction of R. Kelly or that he had any knowledge of it. We should point out all of it put in motion, by the way. Of it. We should point out all of it put in motion, by the way. Of it. We should point out all of it put in motion, by the way. R. R. Kelly, an associate of the musician, has just pleaded guilty to setting a car on fire. So the crime happened near Kissimmee, outside the home of the singer's ex-girlfriend. News 6 investigator Mike DeForest broke this story on clickorlando.com. So Mike, is R. Kelly involved in this crime? Well, there is no indication in court records that the singer had anything to do with the car fire, and R. Kelly is not facing any charges related to the arson. Well, there is no indication in court records that the singer had anything to do with the car fire, and R. Kelly is not facing any charges related to the arson. Well, there is no indication in court records that the singer had anything to do with the car fire, and R. Kelly is not facing any charges related to the arson. But one of the singer's associates, Michael Williams, now admits to being the arsonist. Once I met Rob at 17, he was the first to take advantage of me. He was the first to prey on me. Any experience with any guys except for her boyfriend that she had just started talking to prior to that. Right. Like, and she hadn't been dating him for long. No, she has no year, prior experience with any guys. She has a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. She has a boyfriend. We okay, he's okay. He, my, my son, he played basketball. He I played basketball with me. I played basketball with all my kids. So all of us run ball, and I, I met the kid. Good kid. So I'm okay with that. Um, as we out, have a strict schedule, you know, school, school work, a rehearsal time, then boom, it's your time. So I guess he didn't like that. Whatever reason their relationship went south, he cheated on. We didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. This is her, this her boyfriend. This is her boyfriend. This her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Blamed her. Never having the time. Always in the music. Boom. Young young guys. This is what happens. It's relationship. Uh, I get a phone call at Monday. As I'm um, I'm out at work. My son called me. Hey dad, you need to come home. I just got a text message. I think as we all trying to do something to ourselves. What? Mm. Every light. I'm I'm on my way home. I, me and him almost get home together. I probably get there as he was opening the door. I'm pulling up. I didn't even get in my driveway. I went on the lawn and left my car, ran the house, the door locked. Kicked the door open. She in the bathroom, submerged in water, took pill. A father has to watch his 17 year old almost take her life. Mm. I grab her, boom, hospital. Get everything done, call her mom, hey babe, this was happening, meet me at the hospital. So for that, nobody knew this. Why wow, that important part of Lifetime So y'all told out. Lifetime this? Yeah, all this was out. See, this is all this is out. So for them not to they make us look like we gave our kids away, mm -hmm. I, that's the hurting part now. Don't get me wrong, I love Lifetime for the platform they gave us to bring this awareness mm -hmm. to, to this point where this is ready to be at an end. But when you leave out very important parts to the world. I wanted to put this clip in. We'll talk about the suicide with uh, um, Asriel ex-boyfriend um, before meeting uh, Robert Sylvester Kelly. We'll talk about that on another video. But I wanted to play this part in this video to show you the manipulation of Lifetime, um, the prosecutors, and everyone else that's trying to um, paint the narrative of Robert Sylvester Kelly and you know you have Angelo Clary was like I don't understand why they didn't put this in the um, documentary of the Lifetime of Lies um, for people who don't know what I'm saying talking about um, they is the surviving um, R. Kelly that was aired on um, Lifetime and we call it the Lifetime of Lies because they didn't do their research in um, 
on what these people were saying. They didn't try to do um, listen to their side, then listen to his side, you know, and get the truth um, that's in the middle. Okay, so they left that part out because they wanted people to think, oh, this girl is this innocent little girl. Um, she's um, a virgin, you know, she never had experience with anyone. And they want people to think that Robert hurt her. So by putting this out that she tried to commit suicide with a boyfriend that hurt her feelings and had an affair on her and, you know, and things like that, you know, they felt like that wouldn't look good um, to the public, the image that they're trying to put out on Robert Sylvester Kelly. So that's the reason why they left that part out. I wanted to put that part in and show you guys how, you know, the mainstream media uh, is um, portraying Robert Sylvester Kelly. So you hear Asriel, you know, saying that Robert um, took advantage of her. Robert was her first experience in which he was not her first experience, um, if it was an experience. She had an experience with a guy um, before she met Robert that hurt her heart. He had an affair on it. Um, she was on a Twitter um, rage, you know, talking about him, calling the women's, you know, whores, and um, you didn't want, but you didn't want, um, you know, but one, you didn't want one woman, you know, just different things that she had on her um, Twitter page. Um, and so that she had um, deactivated or, um, you know, the prosecutors had her deactivate that Twitter account, you know, because they want everything to look as if it was Robert's fault. Um, she had issues before she um, met uh, Robert. Her parents, uh, you know, put her in, a, in that situation. They didn't try to give her any help. And I'm not even going to say a, a situation because Angelo himself said she was living a um, lavish uh, life and luxury, you know, and, you know, just living a good life. He said to him on his own self. So now he's upset because um, Robert's in jail. Robert, he, you know, you find out that Robert has no money. So, oh, wow, all this four years, my daughter is coming out with nothing. So I have to spend my hard-earned money to take care of a grown woman that was in a... Um, surrounding herself around a celebrity of the king of r&b that was supposed to have been a billionaire and she comes out with nothing not even one song so that's what i wanted to um put on this um plat on this um video and show you the manipulation of mainstream media and what these people are doing to paint a narrative to the public you know on robert sylvester kelly Last summer, while Clary was living in this Polk County home, someone lit her family's car on fire and poured an accelerant like gasoline around the house. We got a big bone. The car is getting ready to blow up. Clary posted video of the fire on her Instagram page, along with photos of the burned out vehicle. Now, less than a year after the crime, Michael Williams has pleaded guilty to arson. Williams happens to be an associate of R. Kelly. He's related to the singer's former publicist. I drove from my house to Kissimmee, Florida and deliberately set a car on fire in someone's driveway, Williams said in court. Kelly's name was never mentioned during the court hearing. Kelly's name was never mentioned during the court hearing. Kelly's name was never mentioned during the court hearing. Federal investigators used Google to catch the arsonist. Court records show a warrant was issued to Google headquarters seeking users who had conducted a search of the address close in time to the arson. Authorities say they later discovered Michael Williams searched Google for that address three times the night of the fire. Now, as part of the plea agreement, prosecutors dropped a charge of witness tamperings. Williams faces a minimum of five years in prison when he's sentenced later this year. Now, R. Kelly, he's scheduled to go on trial for his alleged sex crimes later this summer. Yeah, who the fuck up there? Hello? Are you at this location now? Yes, that's where I'm at. Okay. Is the vehicle inside a building? No, the vehicle is in front of my house, but it's close to one of my other cars that I can't move, and it's in my garage. Okay, what type of vehicle is on fire? It's a black Mitsubishi. And it's actually a real car. And this is fucking a crazy car. It's actually a real car. And this is fucking a crazy car. It's actually a real car. And this is fucking a crazy car. Okay.
but is the fire threatening anything? Okay, I, rem I know you guys remember when I did like at least three separate um, um, videos about Cass Jones and Angelo's beef. Um, for those who um, new to this and for those who does not remember, who forgotten about the situation, um, do you recall um, Cass Jones going on the bloggers page um, Toxic Diamond. Toxic Diamond did an interview with her and you can hear Cass Jones speaking and saying that she was in love with um, Angelo and um, Angelo, um, you know, called her and, and said he'll come and lay between the legs and, you know, and things like that. And she played a little clip of what, you know, Angelo said. So then we have Angelo clapping back. And so we already knew that Angelo was um, getting at her to keep her quiet. So he gets on his IG live and he just go off on her, call her stupid, says she's not a good mother. Um, on one IG, he said that he used her, you know, and different things like that. And, you know, telling everybody that, um, you know, Cass Jones told him that, her cousin um, raped her, you know, she lied on her cousin, you know, and things like that. And so he said he was going to expose her. He was going to, you know, put everything out there. So I felt like, you know, she didn't do the recording because he threatened her, you know, to put some information out on her, you know, but um, the recording um, speak for itself. Everybody knows Angelo's voice. Um, I don't, I don't think nobody speak the way he speaks so you know i haven't heard it so we all know angelo's voice it wasn't um no one pretending to be angelo you know um also you know um he said that he used um cash jones you know he used her to do what he needed her to do and that um he you know was he played her he said he played her that's gonna be a whole different um um video you know but i wanted to um play a few clips of what they had to say cash jones and angelo and so with this here i said it's a cash jones beef and an angelo clary's beef angelo clary beef cash jones um beef in i says either the two um is either you know, Cash Jones is so in love with Angelo that she used her cousin to do this um, setup, you know, with the um, fire um, to try to get, you know, win brownie points with him and use her cousin in the process. Or she was upset with Angelo because Angelo was, you know, talking bad about her and you know, and she probably, you know, talked to the cousin and got the cousin to do some things. And, you know, listening to him speak on his um, video um, hearing, um, he has some kind of, you know, um, mental problems and stuff. So I'm like, did, did she take advantage of her cousin that has these mental problems? And, you know, um, I'll, it, and like they said, Robert's name was not brought up in this. Like, Robert is not even involved with Cass Jones like that to even be having her, you know, do anything like that because she wishy washy. She's all over the place. She's with this person. She's with that person. And little um, did she know Robert knew all about her because, you know, information was given to him about her, you know. So a lot of information was given to him about a lot of people and, you know, and things like that. But, you know, we'll talk about that in the next clip. But I'll let you listen to Angelo, Clary, and I'll let you listen to Cash Jones. And like I said, this is, you know, many, many times before, this is a Angelo, Clary, and Cash Jones beef. I've been going through audios that I have because everybody and their mama just keeps sending me this clip of Angelo talking about rejecting me. And it irritates the fuck out of me because I know that's not true. I was searching and searching and searching, trying to find something, and then I found what I feel like is the perfect audio. 
Hey, there's an audio where he's actually bashing the fuck out of his wife. And I was like, well, Angelo, you know, maybe it's just something what y'all are going through right now. And he's like, nah, I've been feeling like this. Thing. Blah, 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 you know, just talking his shit. Then y'all following a dumbass website that was created by Don Russell and Cash motherfucking devious fucking a lunatic ass Jones. That's who the fuck y'all following. So keep following it. But I guarantee you this. The ones you follow won't be in them cuffs. It won't be me. See, they ain't, I ain't had to go down there and get questioned. They ain't had me cross no motherfucking board with no people. But you better talk to Don and you better listen to that motherfucking Cash it's not telling y'all the truth. Yeah, because she, she burnt the... Uh, 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 your king up and motherfucking dawn. Tell her, tell y'all about that. I got the text messages coming when she just finished texting me, telling me how she just finished her eight hours with these people, telling them everything. See, see, I don't have to lie. My shit gonna be stuck with truth and facts. And I damn sure wouldn't lie and, 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 and just like you could ask fucking block. The first thing I tell him, listen, bro, I ain't touched that motherfucking girl when I got off the phone. He said, man, what the fuck you got on her? I said, man, I ain't never, you know, what I did to her. I said, man, I ain't never touched that woman a day in her motherfucking life. I seen her one time. Ask him to tell y'all the truth. See, that's real men conversation. It ain't fake men conversation. That's real, the 100% truth. I don't, I don't play no game. I don't have no reason to lie to nobody about nobody. It, 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 that makes no sense to me. It's crazy to me. Got young ass women that should be finding a man out here running around lying on a relationship that she never had. <laughs> now she know more about me than anybody in the world. Get the fuck out of here. Man, if anybody know me, man, everybody could tell you that I don't do nothing, but I talk around everything. And me to talk about my, my fucking wife to them? Get the fuck out of here. To her? For what? Hey, y'all got to make shit make sense. This girl too busy trying to tell you her life story. And if anybody met her, and anybody met her, and anybody talked to her, they'll tell you a whole lot of motherfucking truth about her. And anything I say, I guarantee you they're going to repeat it because she say the same shit over and over. Check out our area codes. Anybody know her, Dana? You got, Dana got her phone numbers. Look at her phone numbers. Tell me her phone numbers don't match every dude that she start. Nigga Stacks, New York. She got a New York phone number. She start, start, uh, 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 stalking me. She do a 407 number. She stalking motherfucking, uh, block. That was, that was the Valentine's Day. Block. She was, she, 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 she got his motherfucking 202. They pay attention to this shit. Pay attention to it. Every time when, when R. Kelly was home, she had a 773. If y'all think I'm lying, do y'all homework. Y'all talk to everybody. Oh, ask Dawn. Dawn got every one of her motherfucking number. Ask him, is that a coincidence? Or ask him, tell him, pay attention. See, I pay attention to everything. This girl's a fucking professional stalker, man. Fucking professional stalker. Running around this motherfucker lying and all this shit. He called females queens and stuff, but he was surely called female bitches clothes and everything. And then I was actually feeling bad for him because he was saying like, oh, you know, he's just suppressing the pain and he just go, go, go. Like he don't actually, I guess, just deal with the fact that it's over between them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well, you know, now you're making me feel bad. I was like, I feel like I need to be Dr. Cash. Like, I was like, you want to come lay on my couch? Now I'm talking about talking because I was like, you need to get that out. Like you can't just hold stuff in all the time and just act like it don't exist. He automatically jumped into making sexual events. I want to come lay on my couch. He like, yeah. So I say, um, so I could give you a session or whatever. He say, I want to lay between your legs so we can have a heart to heart. I just started laughing and I was like, okay, okay. I was like, I'm trying to be sentimental and I'm talking about feelings and you're talking about whatever. And he was like, basically saying he need a release and all of this stuff. It's crazy. But the best part of the audio to me is when um, he said, no, because I said, oh, my God, now you got me over here thinking because I'm a visual person. So now I'm visualizing the stuff that you're saying. One well, one thing about it, I ain't got it. Ella have it on hand. He'll show the, he'll show the snippet. You ain't got to worry about that. The snippet will be shown today. And he'll be following up with this. So y'all ain't got to worry about that. And all that shit, let me, let me explain. After I finish this with them, 
And I'm going to say this anything. Anything else I have to address about this fucking, this crazy ass woman that believe in her head we had a relationship. He said, well, picture you in my arms while I'm standing up, gripping them ass cheeks with both of your legs over my shoulders. Uh, while I'm digging in your stomach. And, um, as I, I want to say I wasn't even talking to the guy for a full 60 seconds before Angelo starts texting me, threatening me, okay? He's like, oh, so you want to go on a nigga channel that only got a thousand subscribers or whatever and you want to talk shit? First of all, I was not talking shit. I mean, the problem is Anytime I go to any platform, at this point, they're going to ask me about Angelo Clary because of what's already been said. You getting upset because somebody asked me about you, and I wasn't even going to dog Angelo. That was not my intention. But when he started threatening me, talking about, oh, he's going to go on Tasha K, oh, he's going to do, like, for what? You always threatening somebody, blackmailing somebody. To be in. You wanted to be in it, so I hope you sell your books and I hope you do this because you're going to need a lot of more lawyer money. And that defamation of character, you'll get that too. I ain't never seen a motherfucker fabricated talking about they somebody motherfucker in a relationship with somebody and a motherfucker ain't never titled their ass with nothing. Ain't never even told them you my girl, nothing. What the fuck is wrong with you? You was an information thing in a war that I was determined to get my child from. Well, he was already mad at me because um, he claims that somebody told him or he got his hands on something that basically, because he claims that he got some type of audio and he said that I was trying, well, basically I told Rob the stuff that he was saying when he sent, um, what's the fake crisis manager's name? But, uh, Daryl Johnson. He was like, oh, you know, you told him about Daryl Johnson. You told him about Mason. Because, you know, he did have people infiltrate the camp. He was dealing with people around. And like I said, I've never seen Rob do shit. Hello? Okay. Okay. You know that I talked to Angelo now. You got to get rid of Mason and you have to get rid of this other thing. Because they are working with Adam This was a whole, like, this girl team thing. They knew about this from, like, weeks ago. Like, they've been planning this. I know you don't probably want to listen to me. But please, can you do that? You cannot let him do this interview on Monday. But see, like, all of this stuff is a plan to just, like, rip you apart and make shit worse. Cannot let who do an interview this is Daryl Johnson, guy. The guy who's supposed to be, like, the publicist or whatever. Rip me apart, how? Get you away? Rip me apart, how? Like, it's just all the same. Like, I don't know. No, 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 just like be specific. Me. Be specific. Rip me apart, how? Okay, I want you to find out. I, I want you to find out how and let me know. Okay. Let me know. He was saying that when he was sending people in to infiltrate Rob's camp. He was saying that when he was sending people in to infiltrate Rob's camp. He was saying that when he was sending people in to infiltrate Rob's camp, that I told him the things that he was telling me. So he was already mad at me from like days before that. He just kind of went off the handle saying that I told um, Rob everything that he told me because he knows that his hands are dirty. He's done a lot of foul shit that he shouldn't have been doing. And I think at this point, with authorities being involved in all of this stuff, he just wants to keep everything quiet that he's done. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if he'll get into it. I don't know what the deal is, but I know it's not right. They're still gonna close it because you have to send the IDs. When you sit back and you remember some things, right? You sit back and you see different things unfolding, and then you go back and be like, okay, okay. So we have here um, Shabazz talking about 
the Patreon account. And so she, you know, Shabazz was telling her to just use a different name. And so she was talking about the ID. They'll check the ID. So um, she knew what took place. And so I'm showing y'all this here so y'all can see the different things that, you know, happening, you know, right before our eyes. And if you don't, if you haven't followed the case, you wouldn't understand what is going on. And so um, we have Joy um, after the fight. um, I think it was, it happened uh, probably a week after or something like that, where someone hacked into Joy's phone. Um, someone, you know, tried to um, put a Patreon account saying it was Joy, that she was going to tell everything. And then um, they wanted to collect, you know, people was paying for that account. So I want to know, did the... You know, feds look into that. Did they look into that? And so, you know, um, I have other clips talking about um, Angelo and Larry McGee. So, you hear Angelo in the argument with Larry McGee stating that it was another guy involved, too. Um, He was saying that Larry was trying to get all the credit, but it was another guy involved, too. But, um... Angelo trying to push himself out of this, but he was actually involved in it. And I'll just say alleged, if you listen to him, if he asked this man to go in and get numbers and, you know, hack into people, you know, information because then he needed for his daughter, he was a participant in the crime. He participated in that crime. And so, um, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, he said that, um, you know, Angelo Clary was like, um, when, as he was arguing with him, was like the feds wanted to know, you know, how he get all this information before they can and, you know, and things like that. So I was like, wow. I was like, I wonder, that's how Larry got caught trying to, um, get in with, you know, Angelo and his crew. You know, um, and they got the information like, oh, this dude got some some scheming and scamming going on here. And so I was wondering, I'm like, did he get caught like that? But you see here what Joy was saying, I, you know, I cannot gain, you know, um, she couldn't get into her account. So I just wanted to point that out, you know, and then you hear Angelo, you know, he, he constantly talk, but he don't listen to himself speak. And he was like, if I were you, I would give me a fake, a fake, um, page and, um, something, you know, to that fact, but I'll let y'all listen to it, you know, but, um, he helped, um, participate in hacking and, um, coming up with false information now he's trying to get himself out of it. You know, he's trying to get himself out of the situation that he's in. So, I'm going to let y'all finish watching this. But, I'm trying to break everything down to you guys so y'all can see what I'm seeing here. And when I first saw the account, I'm like, this Patreon account. And I saw where it says Mr. Kelly. I'm like, why she ain't put Rob or Kales or you know Daddy, you know and things like that. Um, and she said that you know, um, you know, as we set it up here. When I saw it, I was like, "That's a damn setup." When I saw the Shabazz documentary, I'm like, "Damn, it sure was a setup. It was." And try to figure out how to get my own hustle on without this shit right here. Because this shit can cause me a whole different situation. <laughs> nigga, I would find something to do so I could be productive. I would learn off a nigga like me. I would be sitting there really with a fake page trying to figure out how you think how to get some, some motherfucking bread and be able to travel and do shit for my motherfucking kids. 
That's what I would do. See, your kids ain't never too old for you to do nothing for. This nigga number, oh, ask, oh, this is this why you lying, right? Ooh, do you know okay. that I gave Cash his numbers? The fuck is you talking about, nigga? I've been had R. Kelly number. Oh, the fuck man. is you talking about? Oh, no, hold no, on, no, hold on. No, 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 no. You're not going to. same night, hold on. That same night that we did that, did you not give me Don Russell phone number? I dialed Star 67 and called yes, to play the game. Yes, the game yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that happened, but this you, didn't happen. Okay. How do you think you got relevant? Man, I, everybody on here already heard me say, I, you got information from me. Fuck Nigga, that. Okay, Angelo. So you admit that you gave this hacker people's numbers to harass. Uh, Robert Sylvester Kelly and his camp, and then you had you was harassing Don Russell, and so you got this hacker doing all this stuff, and then you gonna send um, Cash Jones in to be the mole to try to um, stir up some mess, um, to try to make more, um, you know, um, just get more, you know, discovery or uh, make false to, you know discovery for your case and so i'm 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 reading you i'm reading you angelo clary i'm reading you keep yelling over them, but i'm listening real good that ain't no goddamn information okay okay since we going there when fucking you had whatever conversation you had who put all that shit together to send that shit over there to them and this then you came you back, and then hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm hold, glad on. Of this. hold on, hold on, hold on, and then you came back and said they want to meet you. They got some shit, and they was like, "Who listen, are you?" Listen, listen, you're right. Listen to this. Oh, I'm right. Hold up, on. you want to hear, baby? We oh, keep going. Oh, we ain't got to talk about it no more. We you keep finished? Going. What's the next? You finished? Thing? You get them all. Listen, let me tell you something. If you gonna listen. No, 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 because I'm supposed to be unrelevant. Truth. Hold on, no, hold on, we're going to get you there. We're going to get you now, nigga. No, no we're going to tell it. I fuck shit up and I'm unrelevant. Yes, do listen. And, 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 and no, God, no. mute him. No. Mute him because he's trying keep to get it on his face. Mute him, mute him, and I'm going to answer this question. Then he can get back. All that loud talk, that's the shit you're doing. That's what I do. Mute him, God. I love you, bro. So I can answer that question right there. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. You don't love me, nigga. You don't love me. When Angelo had whatever conversation he had, he had Larry McGee to get some stuff up together to give to Homeland Security. And so we hear Angelo trying to mute him because he, he was getting ready to spill the, the tea. See, with him, he only need to see one thing where we already addressed and said that part. And that's it. But I couldn't I couldn't even remember where he got that shit from. But yeah, that's where he got it from. He got it because they couldn't figure out how the fuck he was getting the information faster than him. Mm. So so you wanted that 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 smoke out there. Me, I would have got the fuck out the way. I'd be like, no, nah, that's it, shit, they done. But the, I mean, truth be told, you know, you you didn't you you wasn't really the main source of getting that. If we want to really tell the fucking truth. You know the you know the, the, the dude that really to really you don't you don't want to go there like really listen let me tell you mm -hmm. what, what why Larry got in it and this lying motherfucker Larry used to, to everybody know because he told everybody he was the motherfucker who get everybody information when he tell you know who he said Don Russell didn't I say I had a problem with the niggas that was around R. Kelly Larry didn't know not one of these motherfuckers when I'm up in the Chicago I gotta know who the fuck I'm around. That's what Larry, that's what Larry came in for. That's what Larry, that's the only part Larry played. So when Larry sit there and talk the shit and try to talk, tell him, tell him, you see, don't get off the phone, tell the whole fucking truth. Nigga, you was only there that the people wanted to see you because they wanted to know how the fuck you was getting people information. But you wanted to brag about it and talk about it and all this shit. And that's what got your motherfucking ass in it where you thought you was in it, this and that. But your funny part is they couldn't even use your shit because you keep on fucking going on the internet saying this and that. You didn't do nothing but find out people information. What the fuck was that? Nigga, I needed it for me in Chicago. Uh, tell the fucking truth. Nigga, you went on a program with the same motherfucker who locked up right now for you. That's who you got your program shit from. Nigga, I needed to find out numbers on my daughter. Did you get that for me? Yes, the fuck you did.
get on this bitch and try to make a point off of you should have just said yo i gave you all the information i would have said yeah you did bro and you put that shit together and sent it in that's what you did you helped them with that that was your that was your thing that one had nothing to do with me that's the only reason i see anyway that a grown-ass 50 year old man who claims he was fighting for his daughter but has his daughter back is sitting here blackmailing arguing with youtubers like he be killing me they do too much so all in these conversations you are actually hearing larry you're hearing Angelo Clary. You are listening to Cash Jones. I'll speak on fake pages, um, fake um, accounts, um, hacking people's information, um, going into people's private, you know, accounts and things like that, and you know, stealing people identities and you know all this stuff. And see, because Larry is in this big trouble here. Angelo is trying to clean house. And if you just pay attention to Angelo Clary, he got into it with Tasha K. He got into it with um, Larry. Um, he just, everybody, Tim, Savage. But he said, we know, look at the videos. Look, look at him talk. And listen to him always say, and uh, they are not liars. Now they're liars. He was like, yes, Lizette, and she's not, a, she's not a liar. Okay, but you just met this woman through a Lifetime of Lies documentary, and then, but you saying this woman don't lie, you don't know anything about her. But then you saying Larry is the truth. Tasha is the truth. Tasha telling the truth. Y'all go over there, Tasha, Kay's page. She's telling the truth. Now these people finding out the bullshit and, you know, speaking out and they're liars. You know, now they're lying. Now everybody is lying. Everybody is lying but Angelo Clary. Everybody is lying but Angelo Clary. And so this is the stuff I want to show you guys. Um, so this is going to be it for me speaking. I just want to play the clip. Pay attention to the words in the clip. And hopefully y'all understand why we are so furious with the feds. Um, and I want to show you guys the desperation of trying to get a convict, the prosecutors um, trying to get a conviction from out of Robert. You know, um, they're using any and everyone's statements. Um, we have people that's hacking and fraud and different things like that. And I just recently here, and they, they was trying to work on me, you know, because I'm trying to get information out there. So um, I had a blogger to reach out and, and that's grown woman stuff. So um, um, I call her name, hats off to um, Spit and Fire. She, you know, tried to reach me because she was actually going to, strike my my own live now this is my live so um she said that her uh, she went in it was something by will edie um i guess um looking into will edie and then she see her name um see her thumbnail pop up and then she was like my um information was there you know my video and i'm like i don't know what's going on i have no clue what is going on so i'm like i never use her content so i go in i type in will edie's name and that's the first thing um that i saw and so i see it said why i'm ranting or ranting or something like that to the fact and so and it had her title on there on the thumbnail so i push i'm looking up and i go into my account i'm looking at my my thumbnail and i'm looking at you know my video i'm like okay i'm just talking on this video i'm just going off you know on this video so i'm like what the hell so somebody went in and did that to try to cause um uh you know problems i'll just say somebody hacked in and tried to cause problems you know what i mean but you know um 
no matter what, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep putting information out there. They can twist, hack, um, um, lie, scheme, plot, do whatever they want to do. But, you know, I'm going to continue to point the lies out from the truth. Real talk. Here's another example when Greenberg was trying to speak up about the um, allegations and, you know, how they trying to paint a dark, um, you know, picture of Robert. And so when you put um, push on it, it is no longer there. And that's what they are doing in the mainstream media. They're wiping away anything that's trying to um, help Robert or point out or his side of the story, you know, give his side or anybody coming to his defense. That's what the mainstream media is trying to do. And this is what the um, prosecutors, um, in my opinion, is trying to do here. And to me, this is a smear campaign at its finest um, to not allow Robert Sylvester Kelly to have a voice any and every or time fashion. I get ready to speak or anything, like, it's a problem. If he feels like I may go against him or I may, like, reveal anything, it's a problem. So he'll threaten. He'll, oh, I know stuff about you. Oh, I, you know. These other motherfuckers running around like they got an exclusive using a motherfucker who been on the internet all this time, and I tried to silence her up. <laughs> Man, do she know she text messaged me some incest shit? That, that, that she really don't want, but will be out. And all that will be on my YouTube. She better realize that she she ain't, she ain't no good to nobody. She tried to put, put her own family members in jail on some fugazi shit, lying on them. I ain't even going to say in jail. I'm going to say lied on them. Lied on because she felt bad about what the fuck she did. She really don't want to play with me. So all that shit y'all on here, and she thinking she fine and all that, but when I hit y'all with the real deal, Y'all motherfucking Kelly supporters, I should have kept letting y'all go in and let her ride a little bit longer so the embarrassment be that much bigger for you dumb motherfuckers. Because y'all motherfuckers so busy looking for a hero, y'all accept any motherfucking... The woman that Cash talking about, acting like she in, I'm also going to have her on this live. Don't I mean on the live, or she might not go and want to get on there for her career, but right now this going legal. So she going to have no choice either that or she going to suffer some other consequences on a legal battle for, for uh, confidentiality and, and, and certain shit that she tried to manipulate. And then I'm going to tell you where, why would she share the lie with this woman? Because there's no truth to that. Uh, so my wife will attend the, the live so that we'll clear up a whole lot of things. But that YouTube channel going to have that woman. She not mentioning where she get her fake ass information and why they were so entangled you know why they where their holy matrimony started at you know y'all bash Lizette. uh and one thing i give Lizette is i always kept Lizette information and privacy private but believe me one thing about that young lady she ain't never been a liar when she fought with cash i stayed out of this and that but believe me that's another individual that know about this woman to a T. All that shit she put out there, see, I, I got it all. And I'm going to give y'all the audio. I'm going to give y'all the audio she ain't sitting on there telling y'all. Her, her, her repeating herself over and over asking to do something to me. And you know what I did? I act like I ain't hear that shit. Keep it moving. I never entertain that shit. You know how many times she called back? Uh, she re reiterate. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I'm not here for that. My, my, my mission was to do what I needed to do to get what needed to be done. All that shit possessor, the guy that she acting like she was dealing with, I'm going to tell you why they don't speak bad about her on the internet. I'm going to give you every blogger that she got dirt on. Like, okay, if she go out here and she be done said so much different shit, emotional, they not going to believe her even when she starts coming out telling the truth. But see, what people don't understand is I'm not just blowing smoke. I have proof. Cash came today and she left tomorrow. They don't even mention her motherfucking name. You know why? Because they know she full of shit. She been around. She been on them same platforms before. She selling books. So I can't wait that she stick y'all with. Oh, yeah, you know I'm dropping a book. Now all the R. Kelly people need to go buy. Do you want to know what the book about? <laughs> Ask me.
All that bullshit. Y'all keep listening to this dumb ass shit. This woman running around. This woman crazy. She need mental help. And she in love with everybody. Ask the bloggers. Ask the male bloggers that can't say a name. Ask the one that went on there talking about, oh, I'm glad you told your truth, Cash. Ain't no motherfucking truth here. Because if a truth here, you don't want the motherfucking text message and none of that shit up. And you're going to tell you, I hacked it because she's trying to figure out, oh, how to tell that nigga she sent it out. She sent it out. So I guess she tell him, I ain't sent him no text. I don't know how he know. Get out of here. You sent every goddamn thing. You the mole behind the mole. The gang's behind the gang. You for gazy. You got these motherfuckers on the internet playing. You forgot I talked to you. And for the longest, my feelings for him kept me from ever dropping anything. I'm open about falling for him. I've never, like, how he tried to downplay me, I would never downplay him like that. Now, Tim, I have to be honest. I never had interest in Tim. Like, with him, I did fall. So I can be honest about that. You know, I don't think it's, I don't think that, you know, I have to lie about that. Shit just got me hot. This motherfucking cast, let's get back to this. I am really want the questions now of what the fuck she pulled to say so we can nip it in the bud. Now, my son, just phone, I'm going to give y'all this a short snippet of 11 motherfucking video and this shit I don't do. But this ain't come from me. This come from y'all motherfucking king. We're down there, and I'm going to see if she woman enough to say this. Because it's, it's 10 more coming after that. So when she went down there and told them people whatever lie she told them, she better told them this. Because when this shit hit the internet, I'm quite sure they're going to snatch this shit and say, oh, you lied to me. Now your ass is in what you want. Like, I'm going to tell you what really hurt me. Because I really did have feelings. I kind of feel like I kind of feel bad because he feel like, oh, I told Rob stuff, this and that, whatever. But before Rob got arrested, he was basically like, if you have something that can show these people in another light, like, help me. You know what I'm saying? Help me. And because I was so hung up on this nigga, I would not give up nothing on Angelo. Period. Like, nothing. Damn, when I was supposed to put out the Surviving the Lies, but all last summer, his people off of those damn fake pages, which I also have him recorded saying that he paid for these pages that were harassing people. See, I really don't think he wants to go there. But obviously, he doesn't know. Maybe he doesn't remember everything he said. I remember everything I said and me being conflicted and me falling for him and me wavering and me being fucking fused because Angelo was orchestrating a lot of shit, including that fucking following that happened that I thought was Rob. Now we go past that. Let's get back to this fucking cash. Hold y'all questions because I'm going to give y'all a chance to get, to get in the question. But let's go back to this shit with cash. She running around here with this dumbass tour. Only thing I ask intelligent people, go look at all her interviews. Go look at all her interviews. When she was talking in favor, Angelo, she tell people on the thing. She never met me besides one motherfucking time. Even when she put out the bullshit, she pulled up. Be in love with somebody, this and that. You know what? I got text message to ask that she asked. Do you think I really love you or am I confused? I never even answered. How the fuck do you love a nigga you ain't even never seen? You ain't never did it and we talked about something. Man, I wouldn't talk about her but shit with my wife. This girl is fucking delusional. See, she used what she used on Tim and then tried to come back and say it on me. That's fine. Then she probably got a recording with, with, with us uh, talking, talking shit, probably. But I guarantee you, you ain't got no whole visual of shit with me talking about nothing with her. And that's fine. So I'm, I, I, I please put this shit out. It makes no sense to me. Please put it out. Because one thing about it, I can show you airline tickets. And I'm going to them motherfuckers lined up. Uh, how many times in the last six months I've been to Atlanta? Y'all going to be like, wow. How many times I've been to Chicago? Wow. New York. Wow. And then tell us your y'all's hers. And I guarantee fucking to you, we was in them places at the same motherfucking time. And I drive to Miami with my Zoles all the fucking time. So she can't play none of that shit. To get to point A from house to get to point B to her family house, she got to go past me. So how the fuck we ain't never meet? Please tell that to explain that to me. Then y'all sitting there listening to some shit. I'm, oh, yeah. He, first it was she heard from somebody I'm a woman beater. Now she's scared of me. 
she she feel like she lied and put out all types of narrative. You know what the problem is with this woman? She's sick. She needs help. She's good at selling her books, giving a visual. She's the type. Let me give you the type of woman she is, right? And that's why I'm so stern. See, a motherfucker like me is too intelligent to have ever fell for that shit. She ain't got no motherfucker personal shit of me to her. You know why? Because I know she the type of motherfucker that if I would have ever been a thirsty motherfucker, and anybody chasing is thirsty, thirsty motherfucker to get to that level, Without let me, let me say this, let me go back. Thirsty without having a motive behind it, other than sex. So some people might play the for information they needed. That's fine. If you got a person there that's willing to be a part of something so bad, you play them. It's just like the streets. If I'm at war with a nigga and I could play this girl out of position for to get my 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 ups on the ops, that's what the fuck I do. See, we come from that city where that shit means nothing. I'm gonna tell you. This is how much I felt for him. I felt for him so much that I wouldn't care who he was dealing with as long as he was dealing with me. So I'm looking like you have to know I was tired if I got to that point. But I think he thought him going on his live and him saying those couple of things like about, you know, what happened um, with the sexual assault stuff and I could put the business out there about somebody who did, you know, I think he thought that those little threats would make me feel some kind of way or, you know, him saying that, he has all this stuff, which, I mean, he probably does have text messages and stuff. We were talking for a long time. Bitch fool. You's a stupid, fucking, immature, sick-ass woman that need to tell the world you have a son that hates your motherfucking ass, that you don't even know how to raise as a mother, because you're always gone, right? <laughs> you forgot that you got this in text messages about you and your, your relationship and me helping you, trying to become a better mother. Right? We, you and your child. <laughs> Like, this you should to be in a mess of, of fuck shit. And you want to know why you always on the outside? You as a sick woman. Go get you some fucking help from your personal issues, from your personal upbringing. This R. Kelly type shit that happened to you. See, let's talk about that. And then lying on your motherfucking cousin like he did some shit to you. But that's how dangerous you are. That's why he answered the way he answered, because I feel him now. You set this man up. It's your own cousin. You set him up. We ain't gonna go into that. I know yo ain't do that shit. You did it. You're a sick ass woman. And if you'll do that to your family, God knows what you would have tried to do to me. But I'm telling you, when all this shit go up, if them people pick it up and come back with whatever the shit you told them, and it ain't matching, you gonna be fucked up. But I'm gonna give you enough as to where you know I'm not lying. So, um, this is the part of the conversation where, um, basically I'm telling him, you know, you can't just keep going, going, going and not really addressing any of the issues that you personally having. Like, you know, cause there's no healing in that. Right. And then he says, I'm the and running, running the court. You're about to make me go like Dr. Cash, or you want to come play on my couch? Get up. Thank you. I'm That's all I'm going to give you. Yeah, thanks. And I think you're going to tell me a repeated story that she's been already told with a fake-ass motherfucker recorded. Right, let me tell you this. What motherfucker <laughs> woman do you know can say she loves you, but then record you? Make it make sense. Mm. What woman? See, see, that's what I'm saying. I got to break this down. She, she, she loved you. You don't think she thought that was your house and, and, and she wanted to go in there and, and, and flame your ass up, Angelo? They, they, I don't know who, they said the stuff was in his name, y'all. Now, what woman says she loved you and, and do something like this? Now he finna, you know, and I that's why I start, he he needs to see how Robert feel. Now this woman here, and, and she trying to put the allegations, but see what he was trying to do, jump in front of the damn gun, cause he trying to say, cause he didn't want his damn wife to know that he was in that damn entanglement and stuff. You know what I'm saying? 
That's what that was. He was mad as hell. He went on a rampage for a damn day and he threatened her. He said, damn it. If you put that damn second damn record that I got your ass. And she probably like, oh, he is mad at me. I got his attention. I did it for his attention because he's ignoring me. You know, we was in an entanglement. So, you know, all I wanted to do was get his attention, you know. And so I, I got his attention. So I'm not going to play the, the next recording. Okay. That's why I told you I don't F with her. When she said, when she chose that thing over Robert begging for help, I, and I told people, I said, I don't F with her. I don't F with no damn Cash Jones. Had a Sunday because I don't sign shit without without them paying for a motherfucking my my daughter's uh my daughter's uh uh her 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 career like uh, uh her uh, talent. So they wanted me to sign. Sorry for the delay because I'm I'm really pissed the fuck off, but. I'm just giving y'all some real clarity on what this channel going to be. So it won't be nothing to call in. So when somebody said they had a conversation about my daughter wasn't going to be with nobody unless they get money, we was talking about a record label, which the owner, his partner, will be on the, on the YouTube, probably be on my live soon, to clear that up in the year that we made that music. And you can, you can, and, and they, could, they could do that. See, one thing about me, I don't have to fucking lie. And then when they tell you, that was that same month, all the shit they was with my trying to get my daughter for a whole year. I never was signed to them because they had no budget. They was upcoming, and I just didn't see no future in it. They wind up selling the company. The company is still here now by a Spanish guy who owned it, who was a friend of mine. You are a bonus. That's what you are, nigga. Ooh, that's what you are. And then you know what the sad part is? I feel sorry for the grown-ass, desperate-ass women that sit there. That, that, that make you feel good, like you really doing something, make you some fucking bum. No women in my motherfucking family probably fuck with you, but 10 women would look at you and laugh, bro. I mean, literally laugh. Because, nigga, whatever you can't score on that first date, when you when you popping your fake ass mate and playing your big dog role, nigga, you won't score. And with the ones I know, nigga, your dinner won't be what you made that week. Going out with them will I had flashbacks on that. So here in the beginning, that first clip where you was talking about the money and it was all about, you know, record deals and things like that. So I had flashbacks. I'm like, okay, I remember you telling a blogger he was a bum and that um, it would take his whole paycheck to take them out to dinner. It will dealing with the people he know. The women that he know will cost him. Y'all remember that? So I had to put that clip in to refresh everybody's memory on what Edna Clary be saying around here. Look up, dumb man. She running around here talking all this shit, going to all these channels. I was in love with Edna. I love him. I love Edna. I love him. Oh, God. He need. <laughs> Edna Clary got all the ass cousin down here to blow some shit up. And then blew his goddamn self up. Now your dumb ass on well watching this live, scared as hell, and you should be, because they gonna get your ass about 50 years. Hey, don't sit nobody over here try to blow up my shit. You know what I mean? I don't get but six hours a day now. Man, you was here 24 hours, I get six hours a day. You know what I mean? Yo, dumb ass. Talk to the motherfucker an hour before he blew this shit up. Hey, this motherfucker, I can't believe this shit. Yo, goofy ass. Arab don't even know these motherfuckers. You done called Julius Darrington, then then got the Dunn, then they got the R. Kelly, then he done recorded you, and now you realize you fucked up. You want to send your dumb ass cousin down there to blow everybody up. And they done goddamn popped your ass, his ass, and the daddy ass, and popped all y'all ass off. I'm well nervous than a motherfucker. Your whole life is over. Now, Cash, we're going to get with Cash, and we're going to start from the beginning with Don Russell. And come on around. I'm going to give y'all audio facts of her. Audio. Not nothing this bullshit. Text messages. Any goddamn thing you want. And I'm going to give you so many times that we was in the same state, and I've never once called her ass while I was there. 
know when I called her? When I left. Why? Because I ain't never want to be with her. All this, I wasn't interested. It, she did her part. And y'all going to find out what her part is. I'm going to let the world know real soon. I don't give a fuck who she go on and tell. Y'all going to know exactly who Cass Jones is and what Cass Jones was for. And what, when she finished doing what she did, I was done with it. You're going to also know that Cass Jones' family, uh, 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 her, her situation, her, her livelihood, you know, the shit she ain't telling y'all, you know, her motherhood, her being a mother and, and other shit that she personally told. So she want to sit here, be entertained by y'all, by why she trying to drop her books and get you dumbass R. Kelly fans back on her side. Because when I hit y'all with this motherfucking real truth, you dummies gonna feel real stupid. And I went into her phone. How the fuck would I go on her phone? I don't even know her goddamn phone number. And one thing about it, if you hack and see my phone, you can't see no fucking text messages or anything else. Not that I know of. You gotta be a bad motherfucker. And my skill set just ain't that goddamn good. I think it'd be a lot of other motherfuckers that I would probably get their fucking phone hit if I could get my phone other than her ass. I would hope to God that you would not waste your time on fake documentation, fake ass emails, or fake text messages, because they already showed me that with that fake shit where you can act like you're talking to that person. Because I promise you, my iPhone don't motherfucking lie. She said, I'm obsessed, right? I'm a man who travel, and anybody, and I mean anybody, including y'all followers, know that I'm a traveling goddamn man. At least twice a week I'm on a plane. Cash living in Georgia. Do you think I, you know how many times I'm in Atlanta? Where the fuck, why we ain't never meet? You know what I mean? Ask how many times in Chicago. She told y'all the story that I was in Chicago. She never seen me. I saw her. She ain't see me shit. And asked her, did I call her? I want nothing to do with her. That was Dawn. See, she played niggas that she get dirt on. She's no different than R. Kelly. See, she's no different than R. Kelly. The difference is, when I really hit y'all with the bomb, how R. Kelly looked at her and looked at her for the right reasons, knowing that she wasn't shit. Now, don't take my word for it. My YouTube going to be lit, and I ain't looking for shit because I ain't going to talk on nothing. All it is is going to be a filter of information. You're going to see videos of him, himself, with Cash Jones, giving fraudulent information, and valid information about fucking parents, people that she contacted, putting their life in danger, doing all this shit to try to get on R. Kelly dick. And guess what? He never trusted her. He never liked her. Not my words, his words. And never wanted shit to do with her. She was a fucking inf information bot that he joked and laughed on the video. And that will be posted too. So, y'all, as long as my name is Lil Clark. As long as everything I ever gave y'all was nothing but the truth, my motherfucking YouTube channel is going to be the most 100% fucking channel. Because you know what I'm going to give y'all? I'm going to give y'all shit y'all been waiting on. I'm going to give y'all the motherfucking video. The real video that ain't going to save me. Ain't going to save my daughter. It's going to be him letting y'all motherfuckers know y'all sitting there fighting for a motherfucker who's absolutely 100% guilty. Fuck him. And fuck all these motherfuckers that's running around playing this motherfucking dumb role like you don't know. I'm really fucking tired of y'all motherfuckers with this goofy ass shit. Uh, uh, exclusive. I'm not no fucking Tim. I'm in no disrespect to Tim, but I'm not Tim to allow myself to play games. But Tim, I understood how she tried to play games and you tried to play it. And that's why he had a supportive wife who's still there with him. And you know where Cash at? Still alone. Still running scams and playing games in line. You want to talk about Hip Hop Weekly, your, your, your job, your boss? You want to talk about that? Because I could probably tell him some shit about him that you shouldn't even, nobody should know. You don't do nothing but lie. You fucking set everybody up. You fucking around. Your own cousin. Do you want me to tell your cousin, expose some shit to your cousin that you fucking told Block and them and your motherfucking boss and what they was going to do to you? Over this situation, do you really want to play with these motherfucking dumbass games? See, I ain't trying to shut you up. I spared your motherfucking ass because you did what I needed you to do. And that was tell the fucking truth. That was tell the truth. But when they find out who you told the truth on, then that's when everything going to change.
you played the wrong game. You played the wrong one. I keep telling you, I ain't new to this, baby. I play war games for real. All that shit, your shit will be audio with your text messages, with any motherfucking thing else. In every party, from that director, yeah, we know, to block in us conversation. Ain't no other man that was blocked on the phone. Don't play with me. So you got these niggas in a in a motherfucking uh, uh, wedgie with, 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 because they did some inappropriate shit with me. You ain't got me in shit. And I told you, bring the fucking heat. You ain't brung shit. You ain't doing nothing but trying to be creative with a fucking lie like you normally do. But I was going to sit back. I wanted to wait for part two to come and then do my web page and then just have it all out. But I'm going to give you a fair warning. What's to come so you can prepare yourself, run in your hole, get some more lies caked up and try to find somebody fucking outlet to play with your 50 fucking uh, uh, anonymous pages you got and your fucking YouTubes and your, your goddamn Twitters. And that's you behind half that shit playing both sides. All right, girl, I've been new about you when you was fucking with Dawn head like that. Don't play with me. I ain't Dawn. I'm not none of them dudes that if you did this to Tim, understand this. I talk to Tim every day. Do you think for one second I would have ever let my guard down with you? Ever. Man, you crazy? I don't know sweet talk, piece of ass, or nothing else phase me. This is a war game. This was about my daughter. So you forgot that. You forgot that because of the things happened in your life. I ain't forget shit. I ain't forget shit. You can't get my wife business. Period. Period. Make no mistake. You, toxic, none of you motherfuckers. <laughs> That's what your problem is. I got a beautiful kids. I got a beautiful family. And you motherfuckers mad because you missed the opportunity to get a nigga like me. But you know what you, why you won't? Because the look at the sloppy shit you do. Look at all this dumb ass shit y'all run around do. You think that's getting even? Man, you don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. But I'm glad you opened the door. And I hope you got your 15 minutes of fame. And I'll be waiting for part two. Because I guarantee you this. My finale going to say, Woo! Especially when we got all y'all king. Sitting right there with this phone like me. With another phone right there. And who right there with him? Mm -mm -mm. Two young ladies laughing at your motherfucking ass. Because you would never get in their spot. And that's killing you. I said rejection. If I never went pursued you, what is that called? Rejection. The fuck is you talking about? You sitting there trying to sound educated for them people and play these dumbass games. But you ain't saying nothing but the same thing. You good at words. No, no, Make no mistake about it. You're a very intelligent young lady. But I think you underestimate me a lot. I'm not done. You won't get no emails and passcodes and I don't need you to fix shit and do nothing, design nothing for me. We're going to talk about surviving R. Kelly website, all that shit. Them emails, all them text messages we join him. We're going to talk about the whole setup, which you did for yourself. See, ain't no Angelo setup shit. We're going to talk about the cash setup. How you dogging them youngers and, 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 and dummying them motherfuckers to keep buying your book. <laughs> so tell, tell Toxic this. Go promote her next two books so she can laugh at you dumb motherfuckers. Because when the court start, you're going to really, you're going to, they're going to really hate your ass over there. When soon's court start, they're going to really hate you. Oh, you glorified her. Yeah, we're going to let you know who the fuck Cass Jones really is. Shit with somebody else put up the date. We're going to pass them, the YouTubers. We out the way with them. They got their own headaches coming. I promise you. Time, time just work for everybody right now. But when it's clear up, a whole lot of them got their own legal problems coming. Legal problems come. Uh, let me clear that up because niggas be running around going to the police and talking about they putting hits. I'm putting hits on niggas. We did our job. We brought the information to the public. Surviving R. Kelly went off. We kept that shit going. We got bus drivers. We got police officers. We got assistants. We got friends. We got people to lie. We got the storage. You got motherfucking video, audio. You ever seen Ashriel? You ever seen Ashriel at my house? You ever seen parents at my house? What calls have you gotten since your press conference yesterday? Yeah. Um, in less than 24 hours, we've had numerous, numerous phone calls. Mm. And what happens when somebody calls? 
So someone calls, tells us, you know, what information they have, whether they are a witness or whether there's something that has happened to them. Um, we then put them in touch with someone from our office, either through Victim Witness or through our Investigations Unit. Mm. Right. Now, you have seen the docuseries. I have. And what are your initial thoughts? You know, I watched the series as someone who had has lived in Chicago uh, my whole adult life, worked at the state's attorney's office during the original trial, so it wasn't that some of the allegations were new um, related to pre-2008, but watching and listening to um, the women who said that they were survivors of, of what happened, it was heartbreaking, it was sickening. Um, and again, these are allegations, uh, and, and that is why it's important uh, that we recognize that, and that this is not, we don't have an open investigation um, because of the docu-series, but if there were people who have been impacted or affected, we certainly believe that five years. Yeah, and right. this is something that has really hit home for you because you are a survivor of sexual assault. Yeah, you know, someone had asked me a while ago about mentioning the fact that I was a sexual assault survivor when I was running for this office. And I think it was really important to me then, and, and especially now, yeah. because I understand what it feels like. Mm -hmm. it, if these cases were to go to trial, um, the, the Constitution affords a defendant the right to confront their accuser. Um, so this isn't something that you can do um, with the behind closed doors. Um, and I think what we saw in, in 2008 is that fear, right? We were talking about a young girl. What does it do for her life if 10 years later someone remembers you as the girl from the video right. or someone remembers you as this person? And so that's the, the struggle. But we cannot uh, do an effective prosecution or an investigation if people aren't willing to come forward, even with that loss of anonymity. You see, she goes on this campaign and she posts these numbers on all these different shows, you know, and things like that. And so you hear her, you know, speaking on her um, encounter with being um, violated, you know. Um, so I'm like, okay, that seems like those are the people that's really bashing him, you know, women that was actually um, violated and they needed someone to um, use as a punching bag. But I'm going to let y'all hear what the people at TMZ had to say about these calls. And she didn't get the um, calls that she actually wanted. So you see them reaching all the way back to um, 20 um, to 1998, you know, all the way back to there. So you just see them reaching on at this point. The hotline set up by Kim Fox for potential R. Kelly victims has been receiving a ton of phone calls, um, but not the kind that they were expecting. So the hotline, which was set up in January uh, for potential victims to share their stories um, related to R. Kelly um, has been receiving a lot of phone calls, uh, but not from actual victims, but from people who claim to have had consensual sex with R. Kelly and just want to share their stories. Um, we're also being told that men have been calling uh, to share stories about women they know who have also had consensual sex with R. Kelly. Her appearance changed. You know, she thought she cut her hair off. You know, she'll wear sweatpants. She started losing weight. She was like almost, she was just very skinny. And it was just like, Joycelyn, you, this, this is not Joycelyn. Like, what's going on? See, this is what the DA and the mainstream media want you to think and this is what they don't want you to know so this is um joyslyn savage after she left her parents she looks healthy face facial features is fat and you know and nice and nice shape she doesn't look malnutrition she happy on here you know no bruises on her body um smiling you know and things like that you see she's walking at the mall she's not skinny um she she look like she's been well taken care of you know um it don't look like she's been starving to me so this is the type of stuff that they you know want to put out there this is what you know um the prosecutors you know they want you to think a certain way 
and they don't want you to know certain things. So they keep certain things out because they don't want you to know. So they want to paint a picture, and this is a smear campaign, you know, um, against Robert Sylvester Kelly. Um, she's healthy, you know, even on here, um, she's healthy. She's, you know, talking, you know, even though people was trying to say she was coerced and saying what she was saying, but, you know, on Lifetime of Lies, you have the sister saying that um, we was trying to see if she was skinny, and she was like a racehorse when she was with her um, parents. Not talking about her like that, but what I'm saying when I say a racehorse, like one of those racehorses that's not being fed, and you can see they're real. Like, you can see her bones when she was living with her parents. And saying these are the type of uh, smear campaigns that um, people use you know, um, to try to paint the narrative the way they want it to be presented out there in the public eye. And so with us, we are looking, we're doing our research, we're like comparing, you know, um, I'm like, okay, let me go back and compare some pictures. So you can, they actually took those pictures down, the savages, um, off their Twitter account. They took them down off their Facebook account because they want to keep that narrative up that um, their daughter was um, held hostage and starving and things like that. So Robert has been in um, holding for two years now, and this young lady has not budged. She has not budged at all. She did not even attempt to leave. She's still in Chicago, I, I guess. She's still in Chicago. I guess she's waiting um, for the upcoming trial for Robert Sylvester Kelly. But, you know, this is the type of smear campaign that they're putting out there. So I want y'all to see the difference in this here. You know, so um, this is Joy, you know, um, talking on here. And everybody had, a, you know, something to say about that. Why is she talking on the phone? She's reading from a phone. Okay, they didn't say anything when the Baltimore girls was reading from a, a page. They didn't say anything when Faith Rogers was reading from a page. And all these people reading from strip, um, a, a piece of paper. So I don't see nothing wrong with her saying that because, you know, she probably forgot what she um, wanted to say. And she just probably just wanted to put it all down and then give the information to you guys. But see, these are the type of things that they, you know, put out there um, for the um, public. You know, so that's crazy. You know, this is crazy. And these are the pictures of her when she was with her parents and living with her parents. She was so skinny. Okay, and so in the Don Russell's um, case here, it's like um, we already know um, that situation. We know what the prosecutors are trying to do and so um just looking at information and factual information and, and you know and things like that robert does not instruct anyone to do any harm to anyone robert actually will tell that person hey find get the proof send it to my attorneys call me and i will sign off on it he always told them, he always instructed them to get the, the proof. He never, like, went by, like, he say, she say. He said, gets the proof. And then, you know, information, he was like, you know, he'll tell them, don't do this right now, you know, and things like that, you know. Um, just get that information so we can send it, you know, to the proper authorities, you know, um, and that's what, you know, the type of person Robert is. And as we know, like, he even, you know, with with Don Russell, he, he would tell him, like, no, I'm not leaving the girls here at no hotel. You know, I'm just, just not going to leave them be and just leave them, like, on the side of the road. You know, um, you know, Don Russell's like, these, these women is causing problems. You know, just, you know, leave them at the hotel and... Um, let them let their parents know where they are, you know. And Robert, you know, let Don Russell know, you know, I care about them. I'm not gonna do that, you know. Um, if I do that, they just make it look, make me look guilty. So 
I'm not doing anything wrong. So I'm not just going to leave um, these women on the side of the road. And, you know, um, even, you know, with people like Ashanti McGee, you know, he he said, you know, send cease and desist out, you know, send that information to my attorney, um, you know, um, and do cease and desist. And that's how Robert works. So he's not going to allow um, anyone to um, do anything to harm anyone, you know, you know, and just like even with. He instructed them like, you know, they wanted to do a surviving live, you know, Robert out of his own, you know, his own words was like, uh, no, don't do that. You know, don't put that up, you know, and things like that. He instructed them not to do that. So um, if someone did anything, they acted out of their own character, not by the orders of Robert Sylvester Kelly, because, and this is what I want y'all to know. This is what the... Um, prosecutors don't want anyone to know and this is how they do things you know they um got these three men and then they try to um put it where you know to the public eye and to their ears that robert has um these people following orders with him um the Cass jones cousin know nothing about robert um, if he came around, he came around with Cass Jones, which wasn't his publisher. She was planted and she was a mold. She was put in. She was working on every on each side. She was working everybody in there. And so then finally, once she saw um, the lies from what it was, and she was like, oh, my God, you know, um, I can't believe this. You know, um, that's why I'm speaking up now. I was in love with Angelo. Um, Robert begged her, if people don't know who I'm talking about, R. Kelly begged Cash Jones. If you know anything, if you know or anything of these people trying to blackmail me, um, trying to set me up, please help me. Please help me. And he said that to um, Cash Jones. She said it out of her own mouth that Robert asked her. But she said she was so infatuated in love with um Angelo Clary, and for those who doesn't know who Angelo Clary is, Angelo Clary is um, Asriel Clary's father, one of the women that was staying at the Trump Towers um, with um, Robert. So it's just a whole lot of mess. So I, what I don't like is when they did these indictments, right? They put each person, these three men, um, and tried to con connect them with Robert Sylvester Kelly in his case. So they transferred their case to Judge Ann. Judge Ann is over the New York um, um, case in um, trial. So now we have these investigators and then we have, you know, all these people, Homeland Security, Safed, you know, um, filling out this information and they go into full details of Robert's case. And what I don't like about this, because you didn't find any evidence that Robert instructed anyone to do anything, they just still decide. You know, today is a day where I'm just putting everything out here. And I just want to show the public what these people are trying to do. So with, I wanted to show you uh, the clip of the Q and the Q and A with Don Russell, and so we had a bunch of people that was you know already hating on him and things like that. That was actually trying to make it seem like he was intimidating um, a witness, which these witnesses in the indictment says Jane Doe. So okay, a Jane Doe. So do you see any names on here? You know, there's, you know, any name, you know, anyone could, you know, could come up and say that they are a part of this case just to get some clout, just to get some shine, just to get some fame, you know? So, um, for them to say that we are targeting or his team is targeting, uh, witnesses with no names. Jane Doe does not have a name. So they say, okay, we know it's Faith Rogers with herpes. So 
how do we know Jane Doe is Faith Rogers? Because you say that Robert giving women herpes. So y'all saying that Robert has, he's sleeping with all kinds of women. He's flying them out just for his sexual pleasures. I mean, which um, sound like, you know, a, a common thing in the world. So if you making this a crime, you need to put it on the books because it's not a crime to, to fly your friend, your homie lover friend out to be with them. Okay. If he, if he's a single man and he just want to deal with multiple women, that is his prerogative. It's not mine. It's not no one else's prerogative, you know? Um, you know, we all live differently. You know, we all, you know, have sex differently. We all get off differently, you know, when it comes to, um, sexual pleasures. I have been flown out to see my boyfriend. So I guess his ass needs to go to jail for, for flying me out, you know, to be with him. Okay. And so I want to show this clip because I want you guys to know the real, real, because they're not giving it to you. Okay. They're not giving you the real on what's going on. They want you to only think things, but they don't want you to know things. Okay. They don't want you to know the facts and the facts, the fact of the matter is with this, um, text message and things like that and trying to intimidate that wasn't intimidation because that video was it actually was a video and if you know don russell wanted to intimidate you know fey fey he would have had that video all over the web have y'all found that video of her playing with herself you know sending that to robert the one that she claimed that raped her so that's what I'm saying. Intimidation. That's not intimidation because it he they actually wanted the the um judge, they wanted the attorneys, they wanted people, the, the legal system to see that this was a consensual relationship. And uh, they chopped it off where you just see a half a piece of meat. You don't is it a booty? We don't know. Okay a half a booty cheek. And if you want to see Fei Fei body, you can go on her Instagram and see the whole thing. You can see her whole body. You can see her, her boobies. You can see her both booty cheeks. Okay. She got a costume. You can see through it. You see her nipples. So intimidation See, they don't want y'all to see this here. And they will stop any and everybody that's trying to put that information out there to help, you know? And and, and I see documents and I have seen, you know, the text messages where, you know, Dunn is um, in the room with Robert and, you know, at a party or a gathering and stuff, you know, and Robert should have been watching his surrounding himself like we have been saying for the longest, you know, Don Russell telling him, you know, man, you are the king of R&B and you need to be aware of your surroundings, man. You got too many low lives around you. You need to get rid of these people. He said, I see some sneak stuff going on here. And, and Robert like, oh man, everything is cool. You know, you know, Robert brushing it out, but he need more people like that on his team to be like, hell, you need people that's not trying to get anything from you but trying to invest in you we but we put money into you so i can make money you can make money and nobody is scheming you know it that's the truth the truth is the truth so that video could have been put out there you know to intimidate her but it wasn't. Everything was done legally. And so would you do would you think a person would go on a live stream and post something up and know it's criminal? 
Nobody wouldn't do that. When I first started the live, I said, make sure you're not putting anything up there that's um, criminal. You know, and that's what I said. And so other people took it because of hate for Don Russell. And these people are call itself Robert Sylvester Kelly supporters sent this stuff to the DA and tried to say, oh, he's intimidating. But did they send Faith Rogers Instagram photos to the DA? They did this out of hate. So I wanted y'all to know that for people that um, don't know what's actually going on and what they want you to think, but don't want you to know. Okay. And, and for you know, his um, team, you know, you know, we have the right to remain silent, but if we did that, how much would have been known? Okay. Does the team have a lot of resources to get this done? How much manpower and money is needed to get this information with it, with the team have gotten to the internet in time to do the screenshot on these liars? No. Okay. How, how much manpower can Robert afford? Because if we didn't have eyes and ears and to catch a whole lot of things, how much resource does Robert have with his team? And I'm going to give his supporters credit. Yes, a lot of mistakes have been done, but not on purpose. Okay? Okay. But if it wasn't for his supporters doing the research, looking into things, we wouldn't have known half of the stuff that we know today. Okay? And if but they don't want you guys to know that the 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 savages, um the 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 McGee's and the Clary's and everybody hacking people information and you know harassing Robert's people and setting them up and I just say alleged but we know we see so I am looking at all of this here and like all of this is a bunch of BS so they want the public to know that Don Russell showed some nudity pictures of Fei Fei. But see, they they didn't show those pictures. And so you want to ask yourself this question because with um, um, Richard um, Arline and with um, Williams, Michael Williams, they showed text messages. So, why they're not putting the text messages up, you know, Don Russell had. They, 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 you know, they have a way to put a few things out there to make you think, but not know. Not know that he and Robert is communicating and Robert is telling him, no, um, we're not going to put that up. You know, um, don't put um, surviving lives up. You know, um, they don't have that up, huh? Um, they don't have where, you know, Don is, you know, going over, you know, things with Robert. And Robert said, okay, you know, once you get all the information together, send it to my attorney and and have them to call me and I'll sign off on it. Oh, they're not showing you guys that. They're not showing the behind the scenes because they want you to think and not know. Okay, they're not showing you guys that because see they it's a they trying to persuade the public on on their side. Okay, so this is the reason why I want to show you all this. I can go on and on and on. It is so much. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back with more. But if you look at how it's stated, then it says um. Richard Arline is Robert's cousin. That's not his cousin. Um, we know Michael Williams is Cash Jones' cousin. Okay? That Cash Jones is the person that was in love with 
Angelo Clary. Angelo Clary is Azriel Clary's father. Cash Jones was put in place and used by Angelo Clary to go in and sabotage things in Robert Camp. Okay, so who is the who's being manipulated? Okay, who who's doing the dirty work? Who's doing the dirty work? That's what you need to ask yourself, people. We have Jane Doe's. Okay. It's like, oh, well, he knew that she sued him for, um, tried to sue him for herpes. Okay. Then, um, Gerona Johnson Pace, same last name as, um, one of the, um, I think, um, Tim Savage's wife. Same last name. Make me think Cass Jones and Kitty Jones is related. You know, because everybody is working together. And if you just follow the circle, you follow the money, you follow all this. And everybody's connected to somebody. These are Atlanta, Georgia. We have the Chicagoans, um, people in Florida, you know, Detroit. Just everywhere. So, you have to do your homework. And from the beginning, for two years, I have been telling everyone, just take the information and do your research. And a lot of you have, and you have found things that we have not been able to see because it's so much. And why are they trying to shut us down? Because they only want you to think and not know. Okay? And this is what the prosecutors want. They want you to think and not know. So I wanted to put some things out there because I, I'm looking at it like, damn. I'm, I already knew. I'm like, okay, that, that's, if he wanted to intimidate her, the video. We would have put the video out there. If Robert wanted to intimidate her, he would have put it out there. He always said, have my lawyers to deal with it. And I'm looking at the conversation. And he... You know, Robert is a headstrong person. It's really hard to convince him. Um, he rather brush it away and deal with his music. And so, hopefully, the two years, you know, Robert is in holding that he can sit back and analyze and think and get his mind together on what he needs to do to secure himself and, and, and have a safeguard for himself because every piece of information I'm looking at here, you guys, I'm like, wow, wow. The communication, all of this. We, we have heard Angelo, I'm gonna drop the tapes. I'm gonna drop the recording. Wait a minute. Um, oh, I ain't got my phone here. Oh, my phone is dead here. Oh, wow. And yada, yada. And we're waiting. And then I was like, okay. He said he has um, recordings of Robert. So, what kind of recording you have of Robert that's going to show is not your daughter, but he's a guilty ML. So, I'm like, okay. The guilt is what? What they're putting on him, Right? rape, child um, molestation. So you have a video, Angelo Clary, of Robert allegedly raping or molesting a child, and you watch that? Is that what you're telling us, Angelo? And then I was like, a lot of people holding on to things, um, video, just everything because this is a big trial you guys this is a high profile case and after the trial you're gonna see books you're gonna see the tours you're gonna see the interviews you're gonna see videos you ain't never seen before you're gonna see pictures you never seen before you're gonna see um text messages you never seen before you're gonna see all kinds of things because it's gonna be a hot tamale this is a hot tamale Okay, and so makes me wonder why y'all holding on to this stuff. Is it because you want the money? 
we all know everything that's going on here is about money, envy, fame, all that. Shine, clout. I can go on and on. But I wanted to show y'all that video. And um, I put a little spot on the on the little half of ass cheek, y'all. And I put a little put spots on her little ass cheek on, on the pictures because I don't want nobody saying that Texas Black Diamond is intimidating anyone. And I wish the best for everyone. Okay. So this is not a hate uh, thing here. I just want everybody to see how they are smearing Robert Sylvester Kelly's name. They have not given him the opportunity to have a due process. They have not given him the opportunity to confront his accusers. They have not given him the opportunity to prove his innocence. America we're living in, it says we are innocent until proven guilty and we all deserve due process. We all have a right to confront our accusers. So, Barbara Sylvester Kelly supporters was like, okay, if they can go on here and go on campaign, the accusers, um, lifetime, these machines, money-making machine can allow all these people to get out and talk against Robert, um, show pictures of Robert, personal items of Robert's that they purchased from these people. Why Robert Sylvester Kelly supporters? Friends and family can't do the same. And we're doing it the legal way. Okay, we are doing it the legal way. We're using the tools that we have to try to show what's going on here. And so, people, this is what the prosecutors, the government, you know, I call them the alphabets, the ABCs, want y'all to think and not know. So they put all this stuff here out there to make Robert look like a monster. They put it in the indictment versus Shonda Landfair and her family was paid off. He gave the money to Daryl McDavis, but they don't want you to know that Daryl McDavis sued Robert for $1.3 million. Darren McDavis claimed that he was unpaid, but Darren McDavis, remember, was over Robert's um, accounts along with others. Okay? He got his percentage, and I'll just say alleged. He was paying himself, but no receipts. So, you know, Robert couldn't prove that he was paying Daryl McDavis. So, Daryl McDavis won that lawsuit, you guys. That was Daryl McDavis' money. It was no payoff money to Rashonda Landfair and her family. Okay? The trial, his, um, the grand jury came on 2001. And so, they granted the indictment you know, and so the indictment was hit 2002 against Robert Sylvester Kelly. The grand jurors did the indictment without the Landfair family mother, Landfair, father Landfair, Rashonda Landfair, did it without them. And it was her they claimed to be on the tape, but they went on with it anyway. The prosecutors knew that they could have got a subpoena to get the land fairs to come up on the stand and testify. They testify under oath. That's not my daughter. That's not 
me on there. So they decided we don't need them. They said it wasn't her, but we're going to get the, the sparkle, the auntie and the brother. We'll get them. We'll get, we'll see, we'll work some of everybody else and the hell with what this other person is saying and what they want you to think and not know. Cause a lot of people think that, oh, they trying to say he slept with Aaliyah. Um, Aaliyah's not here to testify but this here is about bribery um they're saying robert bribe a government official to get marriage license so that's how they decided to bring Aaliyah in on this here okay and we already heard from demetrius smith out of his own mouth he didn't say Robert instructed me to do anything. He, this man, Demetrius Smith, said, I did it. I did it. Just go back and look at videos, Demetrius Smith. I did it. I did it. I found somebody. You just give him a little money. He, Demetrius Smith even stated that he stole from Robert and he didn't give a damn. So those were the people around him. And so, the DAs know for a fact that Robert has no ties to these allegations on these men. I'm looking at set up all the way. But they are covering up for someone. Who are they covering up, covering up for? They are allowing so many people immunity and to get away with crimes for a big fish thanks to the big machines around here okay so i want to leave y'all with that this is what they want you to think and not know and i want to put some stuff out there and i'll be putting more time is ticking we have no more time to waste First, I just, I just want to apologize if it came across. I'm just, I just wanted to know because as a, as a R. Kelly, you know, supporter, I love R. Kelly. I don't want anything to go wrong with him. As far as going into this court case, I don't want any extras. But that was something that was being said. So I just wanted that was just for my own, and it's probably a lot of people that wanted that. Do you know of anybody that, are you, are you, let me ask you, are you the only one that is like kind of in contact with Rob? Like is, is um, Levi in contact with him? Anybody no. else? No, Levi's not in contact with him. There's, there's two people that contact Rob. And I talked to both of them people daily. And Levi is definitely okay, not one. Last question. Last question, and I'm um, and I'm out. You said Rob is doing good. I didn't say that. I'm gonna tell you. No, he didn't when, say that. He didn't say that. He said he wasn't doing good. Can I don't I don't know if you guys can hear him. Can you he made the surgeries? He's not doing well at all. He's 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 in pain right now. Okay. Now this is my fear, and and I'm gonna be honest. My fear is, as a supporter, I noticed he came out, he wanted his rights to his music, and it seems like this is what they're doing to our black men, our black entertainers. As soon as they want their rights for something, there's a Michael Jackson that died, there's a Prince that died. And I just want to know, is there a way that we can protect him from being any way harm because it seems as though R. Kelly is very healthy person, okay? And then he gets in jail, break toes. Now he has not one, but two hernias. And that scares me. I'm going to be honest. That scares me. Now, I'm a detective, and I'm going to tell you the honest truth. This is bull, bull stuff that goes on because they want to take down our most powerful men. And... Mm -hmm. This is one thing about the black community that is angering me and probably angering a lot of people. And as a woman, I have a son, I have nine brothers, and guess what? It's not, it's bigger than R. Kelly. It's way bigger than R. Kelly. They are taking down our men and women. Y'all gotta wake up. Wake up and see things 
like that is not offensive. I'm just a, a person that loves Rob and wants the best for him. I want him to win this case and come out and make more music. And hopefully, you know, all this, all this other stuff behind the scenes and all, we don't, I don't really care. I care about Rob and getting out of it. So, are you in fear? Or did I just wake you up to the way, did I just make you go bling? Because I'm looking at you and when I said it, your eyes lit up like, yeah, that scares me. Now tell me, now that I said it, it doesn't put a little fear. Well, I'm going to tell you, been talking when I called um, Don, um, and a lot of people on here, you guys, I know y'all feel a certain way because y'all rock with a certain person and, and everybody listen to people and they say this about a person. But at the same time, I, I see the passion in him and, and the tears from Don. And Don did not want to come out. He did not, but we like, we need more people that know Rob to come out. And he did not. And you got people threatening Don, talking about killing him and stuff. But how you expect for him to come out and rock with us and try to work with us and tell us what he know, what he see, seen inside of Robert's camp, where you got people trying to threaten him. He got to protect, he's a father. He, 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 that's somebody's child. So he got to protect himself too. And and he and he hurts just like we hurt when it comes to him. And you know, some people everybody are entitled to their own opinion. Yes, I see a lot of people, you know, everybody got their this back and forth, you know, back and forth. People hate this person. Then the first thing they said, why Don not coming out? Why he just behind the scene? And this it's a woe is me. I'll be damned if you do, I'll be damned if you don't. Now that he's coming out. Because people asking why Robert, people not coming out speaking on his behalf. Now everybody want to jump down his throat and say he's not for Robert and stuff. And and to see uh, 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 tears and to see the, the hurt on his face on what's going on and the frustration. Because we all 